Hi friends and subscribers, hope you're all doing well. It's quite warm today. But anyway, <coughs> uh, in today's video I'm going to be ranking the Doctors from Doctor Who. So I'm only going to be ranking, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, technically there's 15 incarnations but it's 14 actors. So from you know William Hartnell to Shooty Gat, I am including Shooty Gatwa, even though he's only had one like full episode so far. I'm still going to include him because I just I think it'll be wrong not to. Yeah, but other doctors, you know, like John Hurt, War Doctor, Joe Martin's Fugitive Doctor, are not included. Uh, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna rank those in a in a separate video where I rank the other doctors so yeah I'm only doing like the the regular doctors here so before I start as always this ranking is just based on my own opinion it's my personal preference now obviously I shouldn't have to keep saying this at the beginning of every ranking video because most of you know that it's just my opinion but you know we get you know, there's a small percentage of people who don't know the difference between objective and subjective. And they get all offended when someone's opinion doesn't match their own. But yeah, this is, it's subjective. It's, it, it's just how I feel about these doctors. And the truth is, this ranking was difficult to do because I honestly, I love all the doctors. You know, I literally just, I love them all. So even even though I've ranked one at the bottom of at the bottom of the list, I still this I, I still love that doctor. So yeah, and you know, give us your ranking in the comments if you, if you wish to. You know, there's there's no right or wrong. So <clears throat> number fourteen at la in last place is the sixth doctor, Colin Baker. Now, um, I know there are some fans who don't like uh, the Sixth Doctor. I can I can see why some fans wouldn't like him. I mean, when he started off, he what he came off as very unlikable. You know, the way he talks to Perry, and not forgetting in his first story when he when he tried to strangle her, like that was really out of character for the Doctor. But as his era goes on, he does start to mellow a bit more. And I think if he'd stayed in the role longer, he would have me he would have mellowed even more. He would have become even more likable. And I have heard that he's a lot better in his Big Finish audio dramas, which I haven't got around to listening to them yet. Um, my stepdad does have the the Holy Terror, which is one of the Sixth Doctor audios. He's my stepdad's got it on cassette. So I'll have to borrow that from him and listen to it because I do have a I do have a working tape deck. But yeah, despite him being in last place, I, I still think he is a great doctor, despite him not being very likable at the beginning. <clears throat> but that's not really Colin Baker's fault. That's really the way he was written. Yeah, he probably could have been written slightly better. You know, I suppose. To some extent, I do agree with that, but but yeah, I still I still think he's a really good doctor, but I just I just couldn't rank him any higher. And number thirteen is the thirteenth Doctor, Jodie Whittaker. Uh, I know some Doctor Who fans really like the thirteenth Doctor. Some fans don't. I really like the thirteenth Doctor. You know, I think. Uh, I think she's very she's very likable, <clears throat> and she has the the doctory quirks. You know, she's. I know some fans don't think she's doctory enough, and I know there are some fans who uh, think that she could have been written a little better. I do somewhat agree with that. You know, because I know some fans have said that the Thirteenth Doctor doesn't have the intelligence. That the doctor is supposed to have yeah 
to some extent I do agree with that. She could have been written slightly better. And her era is a bit of a mixed bag, but I, I still think she's a great doctor and very likeable. But yeah, that's why she's uh, number 13 on my list. And number 12 is the the current Doctor, the 15th Doctor, played by Shuzi Gatwa. Now obviously, you know, it's probably a bit unfair to rank him because he's only had one full episode so far. But, you know, like I say, I just think it would have been wrong to not include him. Now, but, you know, based on his only full episode, well, technically two episodes, because he did appear at the end of The Giggle. And I really like Shooty Gatwastock. My first impression of him, I think he's great. I, you know, I love his, his humour. He's, he's very energetic. And I am looking forward to the new series. I know some people are, are just very sceptical of the new series after seeing the trailer. Some people are even really being negative about it, thinking that oh, Doctor Who's dead. This, this series isn't going to be good. Well, don't judge it until, you, until you've seen it. You know, the, you may think that the trailer might look bad, but the series might turn out to be good. I don't know that it's going to be good or not, but I'm hoping it will be. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of his Doctor. And and to those racists out there who think that a black person can't play the Doctor, get off my channel. Yes, I'm looking at you, Mr. Bolstrek and Mr. Steph Coburn. But yeah, I love Shooty Gatwa as the Doctor, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. So yeah, he's number twelve. He could rank higher in the future, but for now, this is this is where he is. Uh, number eleven is the first Doctor, William Hartnell. Uh, I know some people would rank him higher. You know, it's it's hard to argue with that, but for me, there's just the Doctors that are in my top ten, I just like just a bit more. But I'm not denying the importance of William Hartnell's first Doctor. You know, he's the one that started it all. You know, they wouldn't be Doctor Who without him. And I really love the character development of the first Doctor. He starts off as very uh, grouchy and kind of a bit of an asshole. You know, especially in the first episode where he... Uh, he he like attempted to kill somebody by hitting them over the head with a with a rock. So yeah, he starts out as pretty as pretty intolerant towards humans, and he's he can be very patronising. But but it's the company of his human companions that soften him and make him more that mellow him and make him more likable. And you know that's how the Doctor became more tolerant towards the human race and that's that's kind of why he he loves the human race now so yeah and he's he's got he's he's got a very uh warm you know there's just something very warm and grandfatherly about about him so yeah i think yeah he's a fa he's a fantastic doctor so yeah that's why but for me, he's at number 11, but I still love the first Doctor. At number 10 is the fifth Doctor, played by Peter Davison. And it's actually Peter Davison's birthday today. He's 73, so happy birthday, Peter. Uh, I doubt very much that you're watching this, but if you are, I hope, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, I always thought Peter Davison was a very underrated Doctor, I know there are some Doctor Who fans who find him to be too... They, they think he's too bland. Or just too, like, gentle or shy or timid. But I just... But I think that kind of, that kind of adds to this incarnation of the Doctor. And he is, like... And Peter Davison at the time was the youngest actor to play the Doctor. And... 
And I know, <clears throat> obviously, because he took over from Tom Baker, like the most iconic Doctor, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't going to be easy. You know, Tom Baker was, you know, a very hard act to follow, but, but I think, but I, I just, I just love this, the fifth Doctor. You know, I think he's, he's very likable. You know, I love, he, he really does care about his companions. And he is iconic as well. His cricket clothes, his decorative celery. And there are moments where he can actually be kind of witty in some way. He's probably not as witty as some of the other incarnations, but yeah, but I just, I, I love this Doctor and I, th I think he's just underrated. So he's my number 10. At number 9 is the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann. Now, I know we haven't got a lot of Paul McGann's 8th Doctor, so it's probably not fair to like rank him above Peter Davison, but, you know, all we've had with him is just a TV movie, a mini-episode, and of course he had a small part in uh, Power of the Doctor. But, you know, based on, you know, the TV movie and Night of the Doctor, I think he's a fantastic Doctor. You know, he's very likeable, he's very energetic. And I like how in Night of the Doctor, where he, just before he regenerates, you know, he's basically a good man who, who's become, who's like been pushed too far. And then he decides that he can't be the Doctor anymore, and then he becomes the War Doctor. But yeah, I just I just love the Eighth Doctor, and I really wish we'd gotten more of him. I know he did a lot of audio dramas for Big Finish, which I will get around to listening to at some point. I'll probably get some, get some on CD. But yeah, there are rumours that he might be getting his own spin-off series as the Eighth Doctor, and I hope it's not just a rumour. I hope that this actually happens, you know, because I want to see more of this Doctor on screen. Please give us more of the Eighth Doctor. But yeah, the Eighth Doctor is my number nine. Number eight is the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton. Now, I know some people would rank him a lot higher, but you know, but you, but you try you try ranking the ranking the Doctors, and you'll see just how challenging it is. Of course, he took over from William Hartnell and yeah it, it was going to be a tough act to follow <clears throat> but he proved that he just proved how fantastic he was in the role you know he was more uh, he was younger and more energetic than his predecessor and very uh, comedic as well you know and I love his outfit his sort of like hobo outfit and him playing his recorder yeah I just I just I just love this doctor and he is probably he's probably what arguably one of the most iconic and I know some people you know rank him as their favorite and yeah it's it's hard to argue with that but yeah but he's he's at my number eight because because there's seven other Doctors that I just like just a bit more. But yeah, I'm not denying the brilliance of Patrick Troughton. And it's, it's it's a shame that most of his that his era is incomplete. He still has a lot of stories that are missing. But hopefully they'll, uh, they'll get animated reconstructions. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so yeah, number eight is... Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor. Number seven is the seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy. Now, I, I love the seventh Doctor. I, I always have. I know there are some fans who find him a bit too... a bit too comedic or too clownish, but, you know, I obviously like his... Uh, you know his his comedic personality, and he's not always comedic. He can be very serious as well, and very dark. You know, I like that. I just really like that about him. 
and I like he's got such an iconic outfit, you know, the question mark tank top, the Panama hat, and he carries the question mark umbrella around with him. Like it's funny because he he doesn't even need the umbrella; he just carries it around with him, and because it just you know I just I just love that umbrella. I I, I want a question mark umbrella. I'm, I'd like to get myself one of those, and a question mark tank top and a Panama hat. But yeah, I know his era is probably not the most is not loved by most fans. I I honestly love his era. I love a lot of his uh, his stories. But yeah, I always I always loved the Seventh Doctor. So for me, yeah, that's why I've ranked him quite high. And then number six is the Twelfth Doctor, Peter Capaldi. Now, if you'd asked me ten years ago, which is when Capaldi took over, I would have ranked him quite low. You know, when he took over from Matt Smith, I was actually quite, um, I was quite sceptical at first. And I think a lot of fans were, you know, you know, his his casting really did divide the fan base because because a lot of the younger Doctor Who fans who like, you know, who watched David Tennant and Matt Smith, you know, they thought that P P Peter Capaldi was just too old for the part. And that wasn't really my issue. My issue was like for some reason I just, you know, I. I gave him a chance, obviously. I just, I just, it just took me a really, really long time to embrace him as the Doctor. And of course, now, uh, since last year, when I was started rewatching his era, he is wonderful. Peter Capaldi is a wonderful Doctor. You know, he because he starts off as very uh, sort of, sort of grumpy, but you know, he eventually mellows into a. You know, he eventually mellows, and yeah, I just I like that about him. He does have humor as well, like him playing the electric guitar. I will say he's a good guitarist, and it's not just him playing the guitar in character. Peter Capaldi actually can play the guitar, he, like he actually was playing it. Like he wasn't just like uh, like miming it, and then they added guitar sounds on. He actually was playing it. And yeah, and obviously from we also got the sonic sunglasses. But yeah, I think he's just an awesome doctor. And also his his war speech in the Zygon Inversion episode is just it's perfect. So I think he's a great doctor. You know, he's <clears throat> he's also very dark. But he's he's still I still find him very likable. And he is very much like the classic Doctors, you know, there's a bit of Tom Baker in him, a bit of John Pertwee, a bit of William Hartnell. And I like that, but he also, but he also like, makes the character his own as well. And I feel guilty that, uh, for not being a big fan of him when he was still the Doctor. But yeah, I... But I love Peter Capaldi now, you know, I almost put him in my top five, but there's just five other Doctors that I prefer, so he's just outside the top five, but yeah, very close though, he's amazing. And at number five, <clears throat> top five, it's the ninth Doctor, Christopher Eccleston. You know, Christopher Eccleston was my first Doctor when I started watching it, when it relaunched in 2005. Yeah, he was my first Doctor, and always loved this Doctor. You know, he's very, uh, he's, you know, he carries a lot of guilt from the Time War. Which is why he can come off as pretty uh, rude and arrogant sometimes, but it's it's kind of hard to blame him. But, you know, after meeting Rose, he, she like mellows him and makes him more, more likeable. And he is a likeable Doctor. And I love how he uses his humor to sort of like hide his uh, his his trauma. And it's it's such a pity that he didn't continue as the Doctor. 
you know, we only got one series from him. I, I wish that he'd done more. It does mean that we probably would never have got David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor if Eggleston had carried on. And it's also quite, a, it's a pity that he didn't appear in the 50th anniversary special as well. You know, I would have loved to have seen to have seen him in with David Tennant and Matt Smith. And the chances of him returning are very slim, you know, because, you know, with Russell T. Davis in charge of the show once again, you know, it's 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 safe to assume that he won't return anytime soon because he said that he would, you know, what it what it would take for him to return is to sack Russell T. Davis, sack Phil Collinson, sack Jane Tranter, sack Julie Gardner, and he'll come back. But that's probably not going to happen. But we can still be hopeful in future when, like when Russell T. Davis is no longer running the show, or maybe he might get his own spin-off as the Ninth Doctor. But I, I'm glad that he's reprised his role in the Big Finish audio range, and I've still yet to listen to those. But yeah, I just I lo I love the Ninth Doctor. He is, dare I say, fantastic. And uh, number four, it is the Third Doctor, John Pertwee. Now, this you know this is like. I love. I just love the third Doctor so much. You know, he's very. Uh, he's very James Bond. You know, he's like the the action hero Doctor, but he's also very. Uh, he's very witty and charming as well. And he and I just love his his fancy clothes. You know, his his velvet jacket, his thrill shirts, his his cape. And he's probably he is a very he's very human, because a lot of his era is set on Earth. So, because he because he doesn't have a working, he doesn't always have a working TARDIS, but he's got his car, Bessie. And I think uh, this is where uh, I think this is why because after Gallifrey was destroyed, you know the the ninth and tenth Doctor and the sub subsequent Doctors after the Time War, you know they you know they kind of saw Earth as a second home, and I think it was to do with the Doctor joining Unit during the Pertwee era. But yeah, I just I just love this Doctor. So yeah, he had to make my top five. So yeah, he's number four. Number three is the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. I know some people would rank him at number one. You know, he is the most iconic Doctor. A lot of fans consider him the best. You know, it's it's hard to argue with that. But you know, for me, there's just two. There's just two others that I like, just a bit more. But yeah, there's no denying the brilliance of Tom Baker, and he was the longest running Doctor. You know, seven years in the role, and he still holds the record to this day as the longest running Doctor. Like, no one else has has played the role longer than him. You know, there, I think there are others who attempted it. I know Colin Baker wanted to play the role longer than Tom Baker did, but he was dismissed from the role very, like, so uh, abruptly. <clears throat> but yeah, he's just iconic. His, his long scarf, his, his curly hair, his uh, floppy hat, and his love for jelly babies. That's part of the reason why I love... Jelly Babies, although I probably did love Jelly Babies before before I discovered classic Doctor Who. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, whenever I eat Jelly Babies, I always think of Tom Baker. And yeah, he's just a brilliant Doctor. He's very, uh, you know, he's very eccentric, very witty. But he can also be very, uh, yeah, he can be very dark and serious as well. So yeah, he's number three for me. For some people, he'd probably be number one, but <clears throat> for me, he's num he's number three. Number two is the eleventh Doctor, Matt Smith. Now, when Matt Smith was taking over from David Tennant, 
I was sceptical. Because, you know, David Tennant was, you know, he was my doctor. Although Christopher Eccleston was my first doctor. When David Tennant came along, I, you know, he, he became, you know, he basically became my doctor. And he was the doctor that I spent probably the most time with. So, yeah, like all fans of David Tennant, I was sceptical of Matt Smith at first. You know, I was re really heartbroken about David Tennant leaving. But, you know, I had to remind myself that, you know, David Tennant wasn't the only actor to play the Doctor. There were nine actors who played him, who played the Doctor before. And this is exactly what happened when Peter Davison was taking over from Tom Baker. You know, fans weren't sure whether they were going to like Peter Davison. So what the BBC what they ended up doing, they ended up showing like one story from the first four Doctors, basically just to remind the fans that Tom Baker wasn't the only actor to have played the Doctor. But yeah. But, you know, once I watched Matt Smith's first episode, to my surprise, I, I immediately loved him. And that's why he's now my second favourite Doctor. You know, I just I just think he's amazing. You know, he's iconic. Tweed jacket, bow tie. His very goofy, childlike personality. You know, he's described as an old man trapped in a young man's body. And he is sim very like similar to Patrick Troughton. You know, because I think Patrick Troughton was Matt Smith's favourite Doctor, so he loosely based his performance on Troughton. And yeah, I can see that, but he does also make the character his own. And yeah, I was so heartbroken when he regenerated. And I was also disappointed that we didn't see him in the 60th anniversary special. And he has actually... Uh, he has hinted at a potential return to Doctor Who. Uh, I, hope, I hope it happens, you know, he might return for a multi-Doctor story. Or maybe even like a, a spin-off, like a Trenzalore spin-off, which, you know, I know we had the Trenzalore arc in his last episode, but, you know, because that was where it was supposed to explain, like, the cracks in time, the silence, but I just thought it was all explained too quickly. You know, I feel that they could have fleshed it out more. I know they did, there was an audio book called Tales of Trenzalore, which which uh, basically uh, explains the entire Trenzalore arc in that that book. And, uh, yeah, it's basically all the stuff that we didn't see in Time of the Doctor. But, yeah, I'd like to see a, a, mi a mini-series, you know, based on that, with Matt Smith returning to the role. Or well, anything, I'd just, I just love to see him come back to the role just one more time. But, yeah, he's... And, yeah, and he's also the reason I love... Fish fingers and custard now. Yeah, at first, you know, obviously, from work, when watching that episode, I was like, "What the hell?" But now I, I love fish custard. So, so yeah, Matt Smith is, is my second favorite. So, number one, you know, you probably know who my number one is. It's it's the one I haven't mentioned yet, and this one is. Technically, it's a two-way tie. So this one, it's a tie between the 10th and the 14th Doctor. And the reason they're both tied is because they're both played by David Tennant. Even though, yes, they are... Technically, they are two different incarnations. But they're two different incarnations that have the same physical appearance. Obviously, the 14th Doctor is older and more uh, mature than the Tenth Doctor, but apart from that, he's not totally different. You know, he still has a similar personality, and he, his outfit is different as well. He still has the trainers, of course. But yeah, I mean, David Tennant has been my favourite Doctor for as long as I can remember. I know it is somewhat cliche to have him at number one. And you could say that it's probably just nostalgia that's made that's made me put him at number one. That may be so, but I 
I don't care. I love this Doctor with a passion. I know there are some fans who who think that David Tennant's Doctor is too human. Well, yeah. So what? I think most of the Doctors had some human side to them. John Pertwee's Doctor was could be he was quite human in some way. So was Matt Smith's Doctor. I know some fans criticise this Doctor for being too arrogant. But then again, other incarnations of the Doctor could be arrogant sometimes. You know, it's not just this this incarnation. And Colin Baker's Doctor was way more arrogant than this. Let's be honest. You know, because it's the Doctor. The Doctor, you know, he's not, he's not a superhero. He's not Superman. He's... He's an anti-hero. You know, of course he's got some arrogance. You know, he's a he's a flawed hero. But yeah, I just love David Tennant's Doctor. I love his... You know, I always found him likeable. You know, how he really cares about human lives. Innocent human lives. And how, you know, how quirky he is. And eccentric. You know, he just has such charisma. That I just always loved about David Tennant. And, yeah, seeing him regenerate, seeing the Tenth Doctor regenerate, yeah, it was it was heartbreaking. But, of course, because he came back as the Fourteenth Doctor, you know, he's rege the Tenth Doctor's regeneration doesn't quite get me as much as it used to. You know, because I watch it, because, because when I go back and watch The End of Time now, it's it's kind of less sad. It's still sad to me, I still shed a few tears when watching that episode, but... I don't get as sad as I used to because I now know that, you know, he, he comes back as the 14th Doctor for the 60th anniversary. And say what you will about the 14th Doctor's ending, but I really liked that he got a happy ending in the end. You know, I know some fans are absolutely against the, uh, the idea of the bi-regeneration you know, the 14th Doctor stays behind on Earth and uh, to settle down for a nice nor normal life with the noble family. Well, Shooty Gat was 15th Doctor, goes off on his adventures. Some fans are really opposed to that. But, quite honestly, I, I was happy with the ending that the 14th Doctor got. And although there were rumours going around that he might make a guest appearance as the 14th Doctor in the... The finale of the upcoming series 14 yeah I'm calling it series 14 despite the fact that it's actually going to be called season one and even when I you know before Christmas I did a ranking of the 60th anniversary specials and I said how much I actually liked the uh, the ending and I still I stand by that opinion even though I'm well aware that it's it's not a popular opinion and I know I'm in the minority on that. But I stand by it. There's nothing that anyone can can say that will change my mind. You know, I'm happy to see my favourite Doctor get the ending that he deserved. You know, because that's what he yearned for, for. For so long, you know, he all he wanted was just a, was just a normal life. And he got it. So yeah, David Tennant's... Yeah, so David Tennant, you know, 10 slash 14 is my number one. So, yeah, I hope I hope you enjoyed this uh, this ranking. Uh, give, give your ranking in the comments if you wish, but as always, just be constructive, be, uh, be polite. And thank, thank you for watching, and... Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.